the season's greetings from the Glen, and welcome to Hamish and Dougal's Hogmanay Special. Ah, Hamish. Dougal! You'll have had your tea. Uh, well, no, uh, no, uh, but look here, I've brought you a wee treat. The last of the turkey leftovers. Oh, 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 oh. oh just the beak, then. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that'll go down very well with a few chips and a sirloin steak. Now, now put away that oxyacetylene torch and selection of lizards. You can finish your entry for the Turner Prize some other time. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm still bitter about last year. Hmm. If only the wind had been in the right direction. Yeah, well, it didn't help when the breeze lifted your kilt and you shouted, how's that for an installation? Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm my own worst enemy. <laughs> no, no. No, I think you'll find that's Big Tam at the abattoir. <laughs> now, get a move on. The laird wants to see us up at the big hoose. On New Year's Eve? Whatever for? He wouldn't say. But he hinted that he had a proposition to make. He made one of those to me once. Mrs. Nochty, what are you doing round the back? <laughs> That's just what the laird said. We'd best be on our way. Well, be sure to wrap up warm. The snow's three feet deep, and it's cold enough to freeze the bells off a brass monkey. With bells on it. <laughs> Don't you worry, I have thought to bring a pair of all-weather sporrans. Come along, let us strike out through the snow. Hamish, hurry up there and stop playing with that brass monkey. <laughs> oh, the bells have fallen off. <laughs> Oh, never mind. We're here at the big hoose. I'll ring the bell. That's fallen off as well. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Don't just stand there shivering. Go away. <laughs> And who might you be? I might be Jerry Halliwell. <laughs> but in fact, I'm his lordship's butler, Littleton. Littleton, <laughs> who's that at the door? It's me, sir. Well, come in, for goodness sake. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, jings. We're never going to get in to hear about the lads' golf competition and meet Timbrook Taylor at this rate. <laughs> Dougal? Do you know something I don't? I've said too much. Hamish, Hamish, knock on the door. Very well. Now, what's all this about the lead? Hamish, Dougal. Uh, Just wait there while I ring for the butler to let you in. Uh, it's fallen off, sorry. Oh, for goodness sake. Hey, let hey, us in. Let us in. Hey. Oi. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Who is it, Littleton? Is it the bell manders? No, sir. It's those two oiks with the brass monkey again. <laughs> Has the monkey any bells on it? Not as far as I can see, sir. That's no use to me. And shut that door. There's a terrible draught. Certainly, sir. Oh! What are we going to do now? I don't know. I just don't know. But look on the bright side. We're inside the big hoose. <laughs> Hey, Mesh Dougal. Delighted to see you. Just step outside and I'll get Littleton to let you in. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. We're not falling for that one again. We'll go outside and you let us in. Very well. Uh, Hamish. Yes? Oh! <laughs> what? Look out. Oh! What was that for? To attract your attention. Uh, Mrs. Nochty, what are you doing here? The laird has asked me to be hostess at his reception tonight. Ah, hence the scarlet basque in the fishnet stockings. <laughs> yes, so let's get inside, for goodness sake. This basque had bells on it when I left home. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, Mrs. Nochte. Do come in. Hamish, put your foot in the door. Ah! Well, at least we're in. Hamish Dougal. Mrs. Nochte, so glad you're here. I'd like you to meet my special house guest. Come in, Tim. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all right. It's a little sound effect I have to make my guests feel welcome. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know you. Well, hello. Your lordship, you never told me Nicole Kidman was staying here. Oh, you and your silver tongue bullshit. <laughs> Jim Brooke Taylor. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Aye, that round of applause confused me for a moment. Oh, Mr. Tim, I've always admired your musicals. I think you've got your Tims in a twist. Rice is the name you're looking for. So you're Annika? No, that's a Jewish holiday. No. <laughs> oh, no, that was the woman with the big bottom who jumped out of helicopters. And wrote cats. Yes. No, in any case, Tim... Tim... <laughs> Tim Rice had nothing to do with cats. I sympathise. Mrs Noctis' pussy has often brought me out in a rash. <laughs> now, I expect you're all busy getting ready for Hogmanay. Oh, we never celebrate Hogmanay. No, we do not. It clashes with New Year's Eve. <laughs> we have our own celebrations in the Glen. Oh, <laughs> Do you remember last year at the Sporran Polishers' dinner? How could I forget? We had the loyal toast, marmalade or honey for choice. And then... And then... I'm a gog. Oh, is that like the Masons? I've... <laughs> I've said too much. Do go on, him. The haggis was brought in... Aye. ...preceded by one of the red-hot chilli pipers... <laughs> ...and... <laughs> ...someone shouted... Look at the moon. Oh, uh, Big Tam up to his old tricks. I wish he wouldn't do that. <laughs> ah, here's Littleton with a tray of sherry. Or would you prefer a glass? Oh, no, that's just fine. <laughs> Fortunately, we brought our own straws. Right. <laughs> now, Mrs Nocte, have you got the canapes? Uh, the village supermarket didn't have any, so I got a can of beans instead. Not to worry. Littleton, warm the spoons. Your Lordship, I had an inkling that Mrs. Nochte might let us down with the canopies, so I took the liberty of eating earlier. <laughs> Who can that be? Whoever it is, they brought their own doorbell. <laughs> Amish, away and let them in. No, no, I've got a butler for that sort of thing. Littleton... Sir? Tell Hamish to let them in. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm there. Hello, filthy night. Oh, now there's an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy, is that you? No, it's me with a frisky woman. <laughs> uh, Hamish, this is Sandy Wedge, captain of the All England Ladies Golf Cooperative. Oh, do come in. Thank you. Mind your head. <gasps> oh, too late. Story of my life. It's not much fun being seven foot tall. <laughs> but you're a fine figure of a woman. Aye, a fine figure of two women. <laughs> Come over here and meet everybody. Mind the chandelier. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, don't apologise. It suits you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Any of you lot play golf? I play around now and again. Anybody? No, no, let it pass. I'll have you know, last year I was entered in the Open. Are you a pro? <laughs> no! No, I'm a hostess. Oh. Sorry, the fishnet stockings misled me. But, Dougal, have you never played golf? No, your lordship. I like women. <laughs> well... <laughs> I used to play golf. I had my club. Mm. I had my golf ball. You'll have had your tea. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've heard that you were a fair old player, Mr Hamish. 
They told me that in the Octomucti Open you had nine and a half inches for a birdie. <laughs> Proudest day of my life. <laughs> Well, Littleton, my guests all seem to be getting on. None of us are as young as we used to be, sir. Indeed. Littleton? Sir? Have you laid out my accoutrements? I have, sir. But may I draw your attention to the dandruff on your sporran? Ah, yes, there was a heavy fall of it at the hairdresser's. And have you pressed my dicky? It wasn't me, sir. My... My dress shirt... Ah, I gave it a kiss with the steam iron, sir. You're a gem, Littleton. I aim to please, sir. So I see. Shall we rejoin the guests? <laughs> Certainly, sir. You'll find them at the end of this short passage of music. <laughs> ah, there you all are. Sandy, can I press you to a volivant? Oh, sounds messy, but fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lead on, Tiger. Excuse me, Sandy, you seem to have a smudge on your nose. Oh, that'll be when I forgot to duck going under the railway bridge. I, I can't see it. Take a look through my binoculars. <laughs> ah, yes, I see it now. Allow me to remove that smudge with my hanky, Miss Sandy. Who said that? I did. Hamish, give me a bunk up, will you? Right. Up, 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 Nice drumage, Littleton. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, oh no, no, no good. No, no, sorry. Let me have a try. Ah, Mrs. Nochty, never without your trusty seesaw. Littleton. One, two, three. Up. Are you all right there, Mrs. Nochty? Oh, yes, the floor broke my fall. <laughs> but do you realise she's got your chandelier on her head? Well, never mind the chandelier. Is that smudge still there? Leave it to me. Uh, your lordship, I couldn't help noticing your ancestral trampoline. May I? Me, my guest. Littleton? Yes, sir. Let him in, Littleton. Very good, sir. Good evening. I'm Colin Self. You booked a pianist? Yes, we did. Where is he? <laughs> look here, look here, my man. I am the pianist, and I expect to be treated in a manner befitting a musician of my calibre. Of course, sir. If you'd be kind enough to step into this cupboard... That's more like it. <laughs> You'll find a curly sandwich and half a bottle of warm light ale. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Bloody musicians. <laughs> Hello, everyone. That dip in the goldfish pond did me a power of good. How's the smudge? Oh, bugger the smudge. Let's play golf. <laughs> Oh, oh, what have you got me into here, Hamish? Oh, the weight of these clubs. What about me? I'm the one giving you a piggyback. <laughs> Why can't they carry their own clubs? Come on, you two, keep up. Uh, who does he think he is? Oh, you must remember. The goodies. He was in that. Was he? Oh, aye, there was him, Bill Oddie, and... Uh... Uh, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember him. Now, we're at the first... Okay, Tim, tee off. Bit difficult to see in this light. If it wasn't for your chandelier, I couldn't see a thing at all. Stand back. <laughs> Look at that, he's got a hole in one. Looks to me like he's got a hole in both. Stand well back. I've got a very wide swing. Yes. I had these clubs made to measure. Look at the size of that thing. It must be ten feet long. Well, hit it with a golf club. <laughs> uh, that won't be back in a hurry. 
Whatever it was. Oh. Play on, Miss Sandy. I will. Well done, we're level pegging. What a fine evening sport. Now let's away back to the big hoose. No, 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 we haven't finished the round. We still have 17 more holes to play. Come off it. Nobody in their right mind would go through that another 17 times. Oh, yeah, it takes ages. Oh, what a stupid bloody waste of time. <laughs> Do you know, you're absolutely right. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he won't catch me wasting my time with this golf malarkey ever again. Come on back to the big hoose. Aye. And don't forget, Dougal, we have to prepare for tonight's big New Year's festivities. Then what are we waiting for? Ah, oh, most relaxing. A little more hot water, if you'd be so kind, Littleton. Certainly, sir. Must be sure to look my best for the traditional village New Year's festivities. Yes, what form do these festivities take, exactly? It's the grand New Year's Eve festival. We, oh, will you pass the soap? Please? Here you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we lead the parade around the village bearing the flaming Yorkshire pudding. But why a flaming Yorkshire pudding? Why not something Scottish, like a Big Mac? Oh, the... <laughs> The flaming pudding is a reminder of bloody Yorkie. Language? Bloody Yorkie, the infamous Duke of York, the butcher of the glens. The grand old Duke of York? That's him. It was bloody Yorkie that burned down the local factory belonging to Sir Harry's sister, a stay lauder. In what, in what became known as the infamous Glen Close Mascara? In... No, he didn't. Oh, no, you're right. That was me. This water's getting cold. Splashing a bit of hot, Mrs. Nocte. I can't even see the taps. Ah, oh, there we are. A twist. That's not doing any good. Try the tap. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dougal. No, 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 no. I'm done. You can, you can try again if you like. <laughs> oh, look at the time. We'd better be on our way. Everybody out of the bath. After you. Where are the towels? Now, Littleton, is that you? No. Did you order a pianist? Get out! Yes. This is a private bathroom. Oh, oh, yes. oh. And take that piano with you. Is everybody ready? Hey. Is the pianist here? No, sir. Splendid. Where is he? <laughs> I sent him to have a quiet lie down in the giant wicker figure of a man on the cliff top, sir. I hope he doesn't get too cold up there. No chance of that, sir. Let the parade begin. Ignite the pudding. Pudding enlightenment is go. That's it. Always a magic moment. Aye, it's worth it just to see the look of wonder and anticipation in the eyes of the fire brigade. <laughs> Hoist the flaming pudding aloft and away we go! Bus is taking the corner far too fast. He's heading straight for Moira Anderson's world of kippers. No! He's swerving off towards the Highland Bappen oat cake experience. Throw the flaming pudding at it. Why? I'm sick of the sight of the damn thing. <laughs> What's happened? I can't bear to look. It's all right. I was going to describe it for the listeners anyway. <laughs> The bus has skidded off the road and lodged in that great snowdrift. What's that written on the side of the bus? BBC Hogmanay Celebrity Special. This way up. Oh. <laughs> oh, jings, Hamish. Look at the faces at the windows. Oh, there'll be all the top stars heading for the BBC Hogmanay Cavalcade in Edinburgh. There's every famous Scots celebrity in the world on that bus, on their way from their homes in England. Hey. No. <laughs> Revens, 
I haven't seen so many famous Scottish faces since Prime Minister's Question Time. <laughs> There's Sean Connery and... Oh, oh, touch a forelock. It's the Crankies. <laughs> Donald, Naomi Campbell. Aye, and there's wee Moira Stewart. Oh, oh, and look there, the bard of the body himself, the great rabbi Lionel Blue. <laughs> oh, they're all trying to get out of the bus. Come on, help me open this door. Let me out. Let me out. Stand aside. I know that voice. Let me through. I'm getting into the bus. <laughs> Is that you, Mother Nochte? <laughs> you know fine it is we, Jimmy. And somebody needs a haircut, young man. Well, um... <laughs> I've got a very heavy schedule. I'll have a schedule, you, you wee rascal. When are you going to get a proper job like Dale Winton? <laughs> I have got a proper job. You know well I have. Radio 4, every morning, 6 until 9. When all the right-minded folk are listening to Terry Wogan. <laughs> Mr Humphreys and Mr. I... Mr Humphreys? Who does he think he's fooling with this, I'm free? <laughs> <laughs> you need to choose your friends more carefully. Mother, sorry to interrupt you, but we must move on. time with that Humphreys character. That's why you've got that silly Welsh accent. <laughs> Coming up here without telling your mother, imagine how I feel. My own flesh and blood. I dread to ask if you're keeping your kilt clean and eating plenty of haggis. I'm going to have to cut you short there, I'm afraid. We're running out of time. <laughs> uh, now then, now then, what's going on here? Can you help to get us out of this bus? Oh, don't you worry, Taffy. We'll... <laughs> We'll have you out in a twinkling. Oh! <laughs> Mr Naughty, what's the matter? I must be in shock. I could swear I just saw a seven-foot woman with a chandelier stuck in her head. Hello. Oh! Why is that man fainted? Stand back, everyone. Oh, it's the laird. Let me through. I'm a toff. <laughs> the laird always takes charge in situations like this and sells tickets. Now, here's the position. One coachload of so-called celebrities. Fact. Stuck in snowdrift. Fact. One flaming Yorkshire pudding completely ruined. Fact. Good night. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you expect? Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that heartfelt sound effect. Now, I have an idea. It's nearly midnight. These celebrities won't go to the BBC in Edinburgh now, so why don't we have a star-studded hogman, a frolic, right here in the Glen? You just mind your own business, pal. Uh, no, 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 he's got a point. Mm -hmm. Our New Year's Eve parade is ruined, so we might as well go along with their Hogmanay nonsense. That's the ticket. Everybody back to the big horse for the Hogmanay frolic. Hooray. Hooray. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Midnight is approaching, so let everyone step up to the steaming bowl and help themselves to a glass of mulled porridge. Hey! Your Lordship, I'm very worried. We were all booked by the BBC to do a broadcast at the very stroke of midnight. We're not at the studio. They're going to get very angry. And our careers are in the balance here. All the best news-reading jobs have already gone to the children in need dancers. Not to worry. <laughs> I have a small broadcasting studio here in the big hoose. It's just through this door. It's true, you have got a studio here. Of course. There we are. Tape machine, record deck, microphone. Good heavens, there's even an old script. Germany calling. Germany calling. <laughs> ah, yes, happy days. Quiet, everyone. Listen for the church bell chiming midnight. We'll broadcast it to the nation. Any minute now. Any time. Hang on. Wait for it. Jings. We've forgotten this cold weather. The church bell will have frozen and fallen off like all the others. <laughs> Jings. The entire nation is tuned in to our broadcast, waiting for the New Year bones. Uh, I have an idea, if I may be permitted to elucidate. Of course, and as soon as you've finished, you must tell us your idea. 
Uh, there is a way we could broadcast alternative bonds to the nation, sir. Miss Sandy? Uh, yes? How can I help? I believe you still have your golf clubs. Good. Do you think you could hit the fourth bridge from here? Good thinking, Nicholson. The fourth bridge? It's a bit of a long shot. Aye, but it would make a hell of a bong. And you'd have to do it 12 times in a row. Well, it's miles and miles away. You can do it, Sammy. It'll take a while for the bulls to get there. Then you'd better start right away. Very well. I know this is implausible, sir, but it's our only chance. Stand back. Here I go. <laughs> nice try, but I'm afraid they don't look quite on target. Well, those are just my sighting shots to help me get to the ring. I wonder what they'll hit. I wonder. Well, I think we're about to find out. <laughs> Get in closer. Now for the fourth bridge. <laughs> Bang on target. Hooray! Hooray! Happy, Happy New Year! Hogmanay special was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Gardner, with Alison Stedman as Mrs. Nocty, Jeremy Hardy as the Laird, Humphrey Littleton as his butler Littleton, Timbrook Taylor as Timbrook Taylor, Sandy Toxvig as Sandy Wedge, James Nocty as Mrs. Nocty's son James, and Colin Sell as a pianist. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Pete Rosser, Andrew Davis, Ross Stephen, and Scott Hammond. The producer was John Naismith.